All right, so this first chapter, like I said, is, is just on basic terms and terminology. Uh, the first couple of chapters, really. And so, what is data? Well, data is anything that can be collected. It doesn't have to be numbers. Data doesn't have to be numbers. If I wrote down everybody's eye color in here, that would be a set of data. Um, if I wrote down everybody, the color of everybody's vehicle, the type of phone that people use, those would be data. If I wrote down everybody's GPA, right? we're all happy we got that high GPA, right? And if not, we're going to make an A in this class and boost it on up a little bit more. Well, that's, that's data. So anything that, that can be collected uh, that's most of the time meaningful um, is, is data. Uh, there are, a, if you look through the slides on this section, they go through, you know, a couple of, uh, of different examples of collecting data. You can see one thing, it says presently the average smartphone owner uses about, what number is that? Three billion bytes of data per month. So, uh, most of the time I'm on Wi-Fi and I really don't count that so I can't see just how much data I use. Uh, I paid my bill yesterday and uh, I saw my wife had used like 11 gigabytes and I would used maybe four or five. But I'm on Wi-Fi all the time, you know, even here at work and she's not wherever she's at work. And plus uh, my daughter likes to tether to our phones. So that's just more data if she's tethered to my wife or to me or whatever. So, um, but yeah, all that is, is, that's one form of data. You know, we're, we're downloading that data off the internet, all that information, right? So statistics is, it's more of a formal way of dealing with that data. Now, sometimes we may be able to take a a set of data and um, do some some statistical analysis on that data and figure out trends or figure out predict I may be able to predict in that data uh, like if I looked at everybody's grades from every statistics class that I'd ever taught and I came to the conclusion that about 70 percent of those students over that long period of time, over the thousands and thousands of students that I've taught statistics to, 70% made an A. Well then I could say about 70% of this class is going to make an A. Believe it or not, about 70% of my statistics students make an A. It's hard to believe because some of you are going to be so mad at me, y'all are going to be, I mean, I'm not going to be your favorite person if you don't like dealing with numbers and doing math, sometimes. All right, hopefully not all the time. But, you know, I can say without a shadow of a doubt that, well, I say without a shadow of a doubt. There is a little shadow of a doubt. But pretty much I can say about 70% of this class is going to have an A. I can also tell you about three or four of you are going to drop. Because every semester in this statistics class, it starts out this big, and three or four people decide, nah, Statistics is not for me. Maybe this is an optional class for you. Maybe this is like, there are a few people in here I know that are taking this as an elective. Why would you ever do that? Well, some people actually like math, right? Hopefully. Um, so there are going to be two or three that are going to, all those, those different things, though, if I looked at the data going back 17 years teaching statistics, I would be able to be predict that. With a fairly close margin of error because my data set would be so big. <clears throat> All right, just a couple of more interesting, uh, if you look on the next page of a uh, couple pages of, of your PowerPoint, you can see that it, it just shows some different types of data like statistical degrees between 92 and, and uh, 2015, you know, it doesn't look like there are uh, many people getting degrees in statistics past the bachelor level, 
When you go to PhD, look how look at that low line down there. Not many people getting their PhD in statistics. That's actually one thing that I thought if I ever went back and got my PhD would be in statistics because I enjoy statistics. Um, but I've never taken anything past the, the calculus-based statistics, so I don't know if I would enjoy it after that. So maybe, maybe a lot of those people go into it and then decide not to, uh, to get it. But we have just, the next couple slides are just different types of, of data and different ways of looking at data. You can see some tables there. You can see some, um, some graphs that rely on time there. Um, some points, maybe if you look at that one, the, the data explosion, the world's data storage capacity over time. You see points there, like a scatter plot that's been drawn or a, a plot that's been drawn there. Um, Another hot topic is big data. Big data is important because think about, okay, it said that you, that I use three billion bytes of data on average. What was that per what? Per month. Well, think about how much, how many bytes of data everybody in the world is using. You know, it's probably just some unimaginable number. Um, and so those types of data, that would be big data. You know, what if I wanted uh, to know the state that dialed a certain number the most number of times? Well, then I would need to collect the data from everybody that has a cell phone, which would be almost impossible in the United States, and, and be able to analyze that data. Well, that's big data. There are actually classes you can take in statistics, in computer science, dealing with big data. Okay, people do dissertations on, on big data and different <coughs> methods of, of analyzing that data. Your book says big data is loosely def a loosely defined concept used to describe data sets produced by our globally networked, internet-driven, sensor-laden world. Big data seem to have four attributes that make it different. All right, so this is also in one of your, on one of your PowerPoints. Volume is the scale of the data. Big data implies large volumes of data. And that kind of makes sense, right? Volume. But it's not going to be called big data if it's just a little data set. All right. Variety is the different forms data can take. Velocity is how fast data is being sent to the data processing and data management infrastructure. And veracity is a trustworthiness of the data. Now we're not going to have any um, vocabulary tests in here. But from time to time on your homework or your test, you may have a problem that deals with these different terms. Okay? So that's why we go over them. Sources of big data. Medicine. I mean, everybody in here at one time or another has taken medicine. Well, before you can take these medicines, studies have to be done, right? I mean, you can't just give it to 50 people and say, are they all right? Yeah, they're all right. Well, let's give it to everybody else. No, you can't do that. So you have lots of different sources of big data. Guess what? That's uh, section one, one through one five. So that's there's not much to that. All right, moving on. Section one six. An introduction to statistical thinking. In statistics, a population does not always just refer to the population of, of people or beings. All right. um, the population is all of the subjects that are being studied. So if I'm doing a study about U.S. Senators. 
then my population is all of the U.S. Senators. If I'm doing a study on female students in my statistics class, then it's every female in every statistics class. All right, so population doesn't always just mean what the, the general word population usually means. You can see <clears throat> on your PowerPoint, a population is the total set of subjects or things we are interested in studying. Okay, so if I'm doing a study on co-lend students, then the population is all of the co-lend students. It's none of the students from the other colleges, just co-lend students. That would be my population. All right, a list containing all members of the population is referred to as a frame. F-R-A-M-E. That would be a list containing all members of the population. So if I'm doing a study on students who wear glasses in my classroom, then I would have to write a list of all those students down. That list would be, it's called a frame. And I don't know, maybe I thought about glasses because of the word frame. I don't, I don't know. It's not, not because they wear glasses that we have glass frames. I don't know. But maybe that wasn't the best, uh, best example. What about a census? Census is coming up. Does everybody know what a census is? Make sure you fill out the census. I know that it can be a little boring maybe, but there's a lot of good information that comes from the census. In 2020, the census, will, the big census will come out again. All right, it's every 10 years. So a census is a survey that includes all the elements or units in the frame. So this isn't the big census I'm talking about that goes out in the United States. This is just what is a census? A census is a survey that includes all the elements or units in the frame. So if I gave out a survey to those people wearing glasses, that would be a census. All right, a parameter. Your um, PowerPoint calls it a population parameter. Both of those words start with a P, the letter P. Population always goes with parameter. A parameter is a fact about a population. Since parameters are descriptions of a population, a population can have many parameters. So even though some people call something a statistic, it may not always be a statistic. It is in one sense, but it may simply just be a parameter. All right. Um, if I gave a percentage of people that wear glasses that have brown hair, if I'm studying all students in my, that I teach that have glasses, then the percentage of people that have brown hair that wear glasses would be a parameter of that population. Even though it'd still be kind of like a statistic, uh, it, it can be thought of as a parameter. So if you have numbers that come from a population, they are parameters. Um, if you have numbers that come from a different set, which we're going to call a sample, a sample is a small subgroup of a bigger group. So let's say I had that frame, all my population listed out, all my students to wear glasses. All right. And then I said, okay, well, I want a sample of my students that are 20 years or older. All right. So that would be like a subset or a small group of the bigger group. That's called a sample. In general, if we're doing a study in the real world, we have to take a sample. We can't take the whole population. If I want to test a, a new, uh, I'm, I'm diabetic. So 
If I want to, if I was, if I was a doctor and I was testing a new diabetic drug, I can't test it on every diabetic, right? I can't. There's no way. I have to take a sample. I may, maybe I can take a sample of 400 people, right? So sample sizes are important. I wouldn't want to take a sample of two and give them that drug and say, oh, they're doing fine. Let's give it to everybody else, right? Sample sizes are important, but a sample is just a small subset or a small uh, group of a population. Your PowerPoint and your textbook say a sample is a, well, I didn't even read that. A sample is a subset of the population, which is used to gain insight about the population. Samples are used to represent a larger group, the population. So I'll try not to talk too much about politics in here, but in politics you see a lot of, of percentages. This many people disapprove of this person. Well, they didn't, they didn't call every person in the United States and figure that out. You know, they called, hopefully they, gave, they had some kind of random sampling and they ask them if they approved of this person. That's where they get their statistics from, from a sample. All right, and you can see the last slide here. A statistic is a fact or characterization about the sample. So statistic actually, technically, is about a sample. All right. A statistic is about a sample. A parameter is about a population. They both start with the same letter, right? Statistic, sample, population, parameter. All right. The last thing we're going to go over, and we only have about a minute, so I'm going to go over pretty quick. It's pretty easy to understand, is two different types of statistics, descriptive and inferential. A, dis a descriptive statistic is the collection, organization, analysis, and presentation of data. So if I go out and collect the data, and I make it all fancy, and then I show it to you, that's descriptive statistics. I've made tables, I've made charts, that's descriptive statistics. All right, so with descriptive statistics, we have mean, median, mode, range, variance, standard deviation. Now. If I want to make a prediction, though, about that data, that's inferential statistics. So when you want to make predictions, you want to, you know, it's 70% chance you're going to have A in this class. If I make it a prediction, then that's inferential statistics. All right, that's it. You